All right, so I think we're live and welcome back to our channel. This is again the Daily Netizen. So today we have a very important topic to talk about. And uh, today is December 18. And of course, we all know that there are a lot of things that happened over the past few days. And uh, we're going to be focusing on one particular topic for today's episode. And this is about this speech of former President Rodrigo Duterte. And I had to watch this footage posted by Senator Ruben Padilla. All right. Uh, very carefully. And I just realized that it's pretty hard to transcribe former President Duterte's speech or monologue because it's a combination of Tagalog, Filipino, and sometimes he spoke Visayan for some reason. So uh, this is a video I'm talking about, and it was posted by, again, Senator Padilla on December 16. And today, again, is December 18 at 3.24 in the morning, exactly 3.24. So, all right, so let's get down to business, shall we? And in relation to our today's topic, we have a headline which is this, entitled, Duterte reveals prior knowledge and appears to emphasize military role in securing release of SMNI anchors amid allegations of Congress's patent violation of the Constitution. And then he said, Natakot sila. So, okay, this is going to be very interesting because I said, and that was, if I'm not mistaken, October 28th, that was on Tuesday, when I wrote about this potential investigation into SMNI. And we all know that SMNI was, according to some reports, previously owned by Apollo Giboloy, who is a close friend and confidant of former President Duterte. And like probably most of you, I did follow these hearings. And um, there were, I think, a total of three hearings already. And last week was the third hearing. And the committee that's conducting this investigation into SMNI uh, the Committee on Legislative Franchises, being led by its chairman, Dos Tambonting, approved a resolution to, in the meantime, suspend the franchise of SMNI in order to basically stop this Duterte network from operating. So that's basically what happened. But as I said three weeks ago, upon learning about this investigation into uh, the Duterte network, to grab your popcorn, because this is going to be very exciting. So as we used to say before, papunta pa lang tayo sa exciting part. And this is not the exciting part that we warned you about. All right. So as you can see, we have this headline here. Um, and we coded Duterte in this photo. Uh, hindi ako nagkamali. Papasok ang military dito. Kasi nakita nga ng abuso ng gobyerno. Ngayon, takot ang kongres ngayon. So, ganong kahirap <laughs> itranscribe si Duterte. All right, I had to listen to his words very carefully. You know, every every second of the video is very important. Kasi pag in, at yung audio nitong footage, okay, I'm talking about this uh, post by Ruben Padilla, Senator Ruben Padilla on December 16. So ito yung sinasabi kong video na kung saan nagsalita siya sa isang event ng PDP Laban. Okay, PDP Laban it was previously the most powerful party and that was during the term of former President Duterte. So, ang hirap niyang itranscribe. So, pag titignan niyo, 13 minutes and 29 seconds yung footage. And here, he talked about a lot of things. But, you know, he merely focused on the case of uh, Badoy and Celis, who were um, cited in contempt and then detained by Congress, by this Committee on Legislative Franchises. And he lamented their detention, or according to his words, imprisonment and uh, abuse of the Constitution. So, ang dami niyang sinabi dito, si Duterte, na kung saan in-involve niya ang military. Alright, so without too much ado, uh, we're going to be reacting to this, you know, video or footage of uh, former President Duterte talking about intervention or involvement of the military. But then he qualified that it's actually uh, graduates of the Philippine Military Academy. So, this is going to be a long footage or talk by Duterte, and I hope you know, my camera is going to capture the audio, you know, clearly. There has been a lot of uh, mistakes, mishaps. So, yeah, ganyan siya kahirap itranscribe kasi 
hindi mo alam kung anong nangyayari sa kanyang, you know, train of thoughts. De- tumanda ba siya? Or dahil ba sa katandaan? Is it because of aging? Uh, possible dementia? I don't know. Hiyap niyang transcribe. Sa totoo lang. Ito yung, this is how I wrote this story. So, ito yung, ito yung new story and ito yung transcription na ginawa ko. So, masama ang nangyayari because ang, ang dami niyang mga pauses, ang dami niyang mga ad-libs, twists, and uh, kung ano pang dinadagdag niya sa kanyang kwento. So, napakahirap i-transcribe yung, yung speech ni Duterte. Lalo na pag informal speech, kagaya nito, monologue. It's like a sidebar, you know, conversation. Alright? Na kung saan nagsasalita siya, um, nagsalita, dito nagsalita, nagsalita siya ng 13 minutes straight. Alright? And makikita natin dito sa video na to, si na, uh, Senator Bongo, uh, Senator Robin Padilla, of course, and Senator Bato. So, basically, ito yung Ito yung partido na kung saan bagong oposisyon sa bansa ngayon. Oposisyon against the Marcos Romualdez regime. And here, and I'm going to probably allege that in this video, Duterte looks like, it looks like he's bragging that he got the support or backing of the military. And is warning about potential coup d'etat or military power grab. I don't know, but that's how I read, you know, his... Monologue. All right? Okay. So there were military guys here, like this one. General Bautista. And if, not, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time the 30 spoke. Three after three weeks of investigation into SMNI. If I'm not mistaken, because I think the Gitan Samasa niyo, wala siyang, wala mga releases. So, habang ini ng SMNI. So, again, SMNI is basically a pro Duterte, pro China network. And what we call the uni, Unified Party or Unity Party, wala na. It's no more. All right? And we now have a faction. Okay? A split between a former Unity Party, uh, Duterte camp versus uh, the Marcos Romualdez camp. So, yan na yung setup ng, ng political landscape ng Philippines ngayon. Okay? And Duterte is presenting himself to be the leader of the opposition. And he even said a month ago that if they're going to impeach Sara Duterte, he actually got there. He even alleged that, you know, they might impeach my daughter and if they're gonna do that, I'm gonna run for, you know, Senate and Vice President. Okay? That's what he said. So, Malala na to, this is, you know, the, the rift between these two ruling parties in the country is getting worse and worse by the day. Especially now that they're trying to silence Duterte by shutting down the SMNI. And he even alleged in this speech, 13 minutes speech or monologue, that the military was involved. And that was the reason why they released, you know, former communist uh, Jeffrey K. Eric Salis and um, uh, Red Tagger. Lorraine Badoy, the spokesperson of this anti... Okay, let me just check because... Hindi ko alam niyo, kasi itong... itong, itong okay, ito. Uh, task force na binuo ni Duterte nung panahon niya. Okay? Na kung saan uh, ito yung kumbaga, instrument ng red tagging, instrument ng, ng gusto niyang uh, mapalabas na anti-communist siya. Okay? He's an anti-communist. And as I said in my previous vlog, that the Duterte's new war today is his war on communism, his war on the CPPNPA. This is his new war on drugs. And we all know that his war on drugs failed, you know, in an epic proportion. It failed. Nothing happened. And in fact, you know, after his term ended, nandyan pa rin ang drugs. They were not able to curb and quell drug trade in this country. And we now have these revelations, you know, new revelations by... Arturo Las Cañas, okay, um, and it was released by the Vera Files, if I'm mistaken, uh, one of one of Vera Files columnists, um, I forget his name, uh, interviewed Mr. Las Cañas abroad, outside the country, and he accused Duterte of being the, the, the lord of all, all drug lords in the southern Philippines, in Davao, in Mindanao, all right? So, hindi lang daw drug lord to Duterte, kundi Lord siya ng mga drug lords. Na kung saan, he even alleged that 
uh, he they planned the assassination of of former Senator Antonio Trillanes, um, an ardent critic of of Duterte, but that did not materialize for some reason. So now that you know President Duterte is out of power, you know, although he has his daughter in in the government, you know, as vice president, he's trying to stay relevant by, you know, self styling himself as as an anti communist. All right, that he's got this new war, war on communism, war on the CPP NPA, despite the fact that he was a CPP NPA and rebel sympathizer for years when he was, you know, Davai Mayo, for example, if you're gonna all you have to do is check on Google, just Google, you know, the third day and CPP NPA, and he even attended uh, their meetings. He, he even said, Mabuhay, CPP NPA, etc., etc. But now, you know, the third day is trying to, to present himself as the new leader of the opposition and running on a new platform, war against communism. Despite the fact, again, that during his first year in power, he tried to appease Joma season, the late Joma season, and even offered Joma season a position, a cabinet position, and four cabinet positions to communist leaders before his inauguration as president in 2016. All right? We all know that as well that te technically, Joma season endorsed the third day. And a lot of, we have, you know, uh, a number of soldiers who died, you know, uh, into his first year of administration um, because they were ambushed by rebels. And despite the killings of our soldiers by his former comrades in the CPP NPA, he tried to appease, you know, this, uh, this party, Communist Party, to no avail. Because, you know, we warned the nation before in 2016. I have this Facebook page wherein I was trying to red tag the third day for being um, an appeaser and sympathizer of the CPP NPA. And I think it took him like almost two years to open to to wake up to the reality that they can never appease. They can never appease the CPP NPA because all they wanted was to to take over. All right, they don't want to share power with with him during his tenure. He, they wanted to to take over and be and be you know the the tyrant of this country. So let's continue. <laughs> Decided to meet the Congress and order in prison. Or in Grimsy. Charge. Down. So he's lamenting that a hey, my minions, Sallis and Badoy were uh, cited in contempt and detained. His word here is imprisoned for very very flimsy ground. So, well, kasi nga yun yung nature ng Congress. He did that against ABS-CBN, all right? They, they, his minions in Congress came up with a lot of accusations against ABS-CBN. Yan yung nature ng politics natin ngayon. He started it. He's, he came up with this, with this uh, new political landscape in our country na kung saan, uh, you know, anyone in power can easily weaponize any bureau or lever of the government. Like, for example, the, the, the Congress, which is supposed to be an independent branch of the government, right? Independent of, of the judiciary or the, the, the presidency or legislative branch. But then, Duterte corrupted our system of government during his reign. And now, Marcos is doing the same thing, all right? By trying to shut down SMNI, which is basically the mouthpiece of Duterte. And um, as we said earlier, a pro-China network. Alam mo kung ayaw mo kung isa doon. Sabihin mo lang sa... Let's fast forward. So ito yung uh, Partido Demokratiko Pilipino. I'm not sure when this was held but um, as we can see here, it was posted on December 16 and uh, there was this unification uh, or talks between between uh, PDP and another party all right, uh, to, to unify. All right? Um, they, they want to unify, to fight, to probably to fight the current administration of, of Marcos. So, my, my job, it must be my job and occupation. Mm -hmm. Sino bang nagwala sa akin yung basa? It's an occupation, let you. Hindi ka talaga mabigil. Unless it involves national security. 
Alright, so, sinasabi lang yun dito na pwede mo lang invoke yung citing in contempt pag national security, but, but you can actually do it in closed door meetings, right? Uh, legislative session, as I said. Pero, sinayt pa rin nila in contempt itong mga minions niya, yung mga deterred minions, so sina Celis at, at Badoy, at kinagalit siya ni Duterte. Kasi nga, si Badoy, for example, was very instrumental in, in you know, attacking Duterte critics during his term. Alright, ang dami niyang mga niredtag, ang dami niyang mga sinarang tao, si Adam Arroyo, for example, and, and including the vice president at the time, a vice, uh, former vice president, uh, Lenny Robredo, right? Na sinasabi niya na, na fake news peddler daw at, at, um, at sympathizer ng CPPNP, which is quite ironic because during the first year of the third day, his entire administration was sympathizing with the CPPNP, all right? Uh, that's the reason why I accuse the third day supporters of having a fish brain because they tend to forget that very clear and simple fact that their administration, the, the third administration that they support, was one of the biggest and worst CPP-NPA sympathizers. 